So often, I think, I have felt, I, I wish that I had spoken up more on different things. And a lot of times in the boardroom, you have a lot of voices and you want to make sure every voice is heard. But that means you can't always say exactly all the things you want to say. And I have just found in my own life, um, I do better when I bring that out and make sure there's nothing left unsaid. Maynard, a, a lot of uh, founders talk to you, ask for advice, I'm sure, and you see the landscape and the challenges that leaders and leadership is facing. What do you think is the most critical issue that leaders, innovators are facing uh, right now that, that perhaps they can get some insight into out of your book? Well, I think it's all about the culture and the values you want to live by and how transparent you want to be. And I think we need to learn that transparency is and integrity never goes out of style. And I try to encourage people from the time they start as an infant in their company that they need to have those as, as crucial values. And they, you can't lose them as you get bigger. Maynard, I want to dig into sort of the role and your thoughts on the role building a strong board plays into this with, with a founder that is building a company. Given the fact that we have seen a number of boards come under fire recently, whether it is Tesla or whether it is CBS, to name a few. Yeah, it's, it's crucial. And I, I tell founders, look, there's money. It's, it's fairly easy today to get money, and there's a lot of it. But who you pick as your partner matters a lot more. And the board is the only the person that can really fire you. And you don't want to be comfortable with a board that's safe. You want to hire the best advisors you can to be by your side. And that, that's a nuanced discussion. And then you have to decide as you grow, does the board need to be refreshed? And how current are they on the problems you're facing? And so uh, I think it's one of the biggest challenges for boards and CEOs to make sure they continue to do the right thing. Maynard, before the break, uh, we sort of teased the segment by mentioning the testimonies that we got from social media execs on the Hill last week. Today, The New Yorker has a pretty colorful uh, profile of Mark Zuckerberg. And one of the lessons from uh, Evan Osnos's piece is that you talk about values. I mean, Facebook's values were about dominating, dominating competition, dominating ideas. And then suddenly you find yourself in the middle of this conundrum on how you become an arbiter of truth for basically planet Earth. How are these companies supposed to handle that? Well, I think in the beginning, you're just trying to become relevant, you know, and, and you can't get ahead of yourself and think you're all that because, you know, just like in your career, when you start out in your career, no one really wants to pay attention to you. And then somewhere along the line, you get successful and then people give you too much credit and <laughs> you have to learn and evolve how to actually give advice and up your game and up your responsibility. The higher up you go and the more important your product becomes, the more responsible you have to be to make sure it's used correctly around the, uh, the globe. You know, technology could be used for good or for bad. Um, and we have an obligation to make sure that we, we drive usage for good. Maynard, you're in position to give advice now. Where did you get your best advice when you were first starting out? Oh, I had so many people uh, give me advice. And I had uh, 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 somebody that was on his, uh, probably my age, uh, when I was in my 20s, that just told me all the things I was doing wrong, and but did it in such a way that it made me smile and made me want to do it. And it was everything from little things, like when you leave your office to go do something, walk quickly and with purpose, to, you know what, you don't write very well, and how about if we help you on that? And uh, then all, you know, then Meg was a mentor to me for years, still is, at eBay. And I, I just learned so much, I just kept, listening and growing and that's what I want to do now is continue to grow and I want to give back and that's what the book is all about. Maynard, before we let you go, uh, how would you assess the current business environment? Is this a good time to be an entrepreneur and start a company? Absolutely. Um, yeah, and as I said earlier, there's plenty of money to get funded, but it's still hard to build a company and it's still hard to grow a company. Every stage of this is hard, uh, and, but it's fun, and I'd rather be doing that than almost anything else in the world. 
All right, so really quick, if you had to pick the hardest part, is it about raising the initial dollars? Is it about getting, leaping from small to big? Or is it about walking away? I think the hardest thing is proving, is scaling, getting an idea, getting it to relevance, and then making sure you get it to the ultimate place it's intended to be. Super hard.